Store MI, that's the name of the new software from AMD to go with their new X470 chipset. But flying a little bit under the radar is that software is also available for Threadripper users. So you bought X399, good news, there's a software upgrade. It provides tiered storage spaces for Windows. And this is kind of a big deal. But for me to get you to understand why it's a big deal, unless you work in the enterprise, I need to explain what the difference is between a cache and a tiered storage solution. So let's dive in. Howdy, I'm Wendell, this is level one. So you should subscribe and hit the bell and do all that kind of stuff because I've got to feed the algorithm apparently. You can comment below, do all that kind of stuff. So yeah, tiered storage. Tiered storage is what makes the enterprise go round. And it means combining an SSD with a mechanical hard drive. And you, the consumer, or you possibly the technology enthusiast, have probably experienced one of the misimplementations of this technology on consumer gear. So like Apple has the fusion drive that is utter crap. <coughs> Dell has shipped uh, something they call SSHDs, which is a mechanical hard drive with flash on board. That is utter crap. <coughs> Um, there have been several solutions from a lot of vendors over the years where either the hardware or the software or both really leaves a lot to be desired. All of that is utter crap. And so this technology in general has a bad rep. A lot of people don't want to install software that's bundled with a motherboard because historically it has been crap. I think that the last few years the bundled software has gotten better in general. If you're a Windows user, you know, uh, that's maybe news to you. If you're a Linux user, I've got something for you in a minute. This is, we've got a Linux channel, but I like to always mention the Linux stuff because we got a lot of people to cross over. I myself cross over quite a bit. So not really, uh, I don't, you know, all operating systems have their evils and the stuff that they're really good at, some more so than others. Some operating systems waste your time, kind of like I do sometimes when I ramble on and on, like I'm doing now, sorry. Anyway. Let's get back to it. Store in my, it's tiered storage for Windows. And it truly is a tiered storage solution. The really awesome thing about this is that AMD has licensed this technology from a company called Inmodus. And Inmodus is kind of an enterprise software company. The software is certified by Microsoft. You see this in the data center. Uh, most prominently, you see this sort of tiered storage thing with SANS, and especially in large-ish, medium large-ish, VMware installations. And it's where you have, you know, probably a couple of terabytes of flash, yeah, terabytes of flash memory, and maybe a couple dozen or maybe a hundred or 500 terabytes or more, I mean, you can get it in the petabyte range, of mechanical spinning rust. Because mechanical spinning rust is just so darn cheap and the enterprise doesn't really want to pay for, you know, hundreds of terabytes of SSDs if they can possibly avoid it. And so in the enterprise with servers, you sort of automatically have this system where, you know, the stuff that you don't use very much goes to the spinning rust or goes to something else. And the stuff that you're using a whole bunch goes to the flash. And so if you're doing a lot of database operations or a lot of things that involve lots of IO operations, the underlying virtualization software, the underlying server software figures out what you're using and what you're not, and it arranges it. And this is different than a cache. A cache just is a fundamentally different technology than tiered storage. With a cache, you know, all of your stuff is stored on spinning rust, and maybe it's a read cache or maybe it's a write cache, but the cache is just designed to um, sit between the, uh, you know, slower storage and the stuff that you're actually, actually working with it. Cache is not generally a source of truth, in other words. And so with tiered storage, the storage uh, is sort of combined, and so you can write to the tiered storage and it'll be perfectly happy living there. And then when you, you know, have something that you need more space in the higher speed storage in your storage pool, it'll be physically moved out of the faster storage and into the slower storage. So tiered storage is a little different critter and that's why things like, you know, the Apple Fusion Drive and, you know, the SSHD drives generally are crap but it has worked so well in the enterprise. That's what the disconnect there is. And so it's taken AMD to bring us StoreMI, which is a first attempt at bringing that enterprise technology to the consumer. And I've been testing it. And guess what? It actually, it works. It works pretty well. Let me explain how. On this system, I've created a couple of different 
store MI, you know, tiered storage solutions. One is bootable, one is not bootable. You can't really have both at the same time. The software is kind of limited and I'll talk more about, you've got some upgrade options and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But I've created, I've got my mechanical eight terabyte Western digital hard drive and I have created a tiered storage system with a 256 gigabyte NVMe and I've also added a two gigabyte RAM cache. So I've got two gigabytes of RAM plus a, a pretty zippy Toshiba RD400 uh, 256 gigabyte NVMe plus my WD Red eight terabyte mechanical hard drive. Now to the system, this just shows up as one big eight terabyte hard drive. But the underlying software that's provided by StoreMI, which is, you know, a, it's a licensed technology from Inmodus, but we'll just call it StoreMI. It provides an accelerated tiered storage solution based on those three storage mediums. Now this version, you really just pick one fast storage device and one slow storage device. But with other versions of the software, like you can upgrade from Inmodus and you know get fancier versions and have more fast drives and you know you could like mix Optanes with SSDs or mix SSDs with mechanical hard drives. I don't think it makes sense to mix, you know, especially the 16 or 32 gigabyte Optane with a mechanical hard drive, just because. But you can combine fast and slow speed devices. The other really awesome thing about this software is that it is not unreversible, meaning that you can apply it to an already existing bootable system or an already existing, you know, games hard drive if you have that. And you can also undo it in software. It's like, I, you know, this is not working for me. I don't like this. You can just go in the software and say, hey, stop doing this. And it'll move all the stuff on the fast storage, storage tier to the slow storage tier. And it'll just show up and work exactly like a regular normal hard drive. Nothing lost. The irony of this is that, you know, having you, like Intel Optane, the technology is really pretty cool, but how Intel is instructing consumers to use it is really honestly pretty tone deaf, in my opinion. You know, the first generation Optane came out and it was 16 and 32 gigabytes. Why? It's, it's not any, I mean, it was, it was more of the same crap, in all honesty. And it could work well in some scenarios, but generally, ain't nobody got time for that. So then they came out with the Optane 800P. And so let's say, you know, it's a hunt around 100 gigabytes Optane. And that seems more reasonable, but then you had to format your, your drive with it and blah, blah, blah. And then, it, then Intel was like, well, wait, wait, we don't support using that really for cash. It should just be a standalone drive. And I think they're updating their software to use that, but it's just like, oh, that's big enough for a, a, a boot drive? What? So that's why I say tone deaf, pretty dumb. So with this, <laughs> the irony, and it makes me giggle a little bit, is that if you use something like the Optane 800P, which for the record, I believe is overpriced, it's, I mean, 3D X-Point is cool technology. It's cool as heck, but for the record, overpriced. If you use that Optane 800P with the store in my setup and a regular SSD, you will actually have a really good experience. It's actually shockingly good. And the irony of that is to, to get the best experience with Optane, you're gonna need to use an AMD platform. This is actually something that I want to use on Threadripper. Now, it there are some limitations in the store in my software. It supports up to a 256 gigabyte storage tier. So you shouldn't use an SSD larger than that because if you do, you'll have to give InMotion some money for a license to be able to use the full capacity of your SSD. If you don't want it, like if you have a 512 gigabyte and you don't want to pay for the license, it'll split the drive half into cache and half into another drive that you can access. And so it'll just get a drive letter on your system. So that's okay. You could, I mean, you don't have to pay. It'll totally work fine with a 512 gig SSD. It'll just only use half of it, 256 gigs for the caching functionality. But this is actually pretty cool because this is enterprise-ish technology. One other interesting use case for this is if your operating system is already on an SSD or an NVMe and you're just running out of space, you can fuse a mechanical hard drive to your SSD. So I could add this eight terabyte hard drive, for example, to the boot volume on this computer if I were running out of space and the software will take care of automatically moving the stuff that I'm not really using frequently to the mechanical hard drive and it will keep all the stuff that I'm using on the local drive local. Now the only caveat there is if your SSD or NVMe is over 256 gigabytes, you run into some problems there, but you can still do the tiered storage things. You just add a drive and you're, you're good to go. So you might be thinking, well, what can I expect in terms of performance? Well, the performance will be basically equivalent 
to whatever the fast tier is for anything that you're using from the fast tier. And it's not, it's not really dumb either. Like if you just use something once, it's not gonna bother to move that to the fast tier. But if you, you know, boot the system two or three times, you use something, then it will move that data to the fast tier. So if there's a game that you play a whole bunch, it'll move it to the fast tier. And the game that you stop playing, you haven't played in forever, it's gonna move that to the slow tier. And so the first time you play that game, you know, you load the levels or whatever, it'll be the speed of your slow medium. But when you, you know, play it again, it's gonna move it back to the fast medium. And then the next time after that that you play it, it's gonna be however fast your fast medium is. So in the case of you know, higher end NVMe, that's three gigabytes per second. If you're talking Optane or something like that, the access time is gonna be really good. The transfer rate's gonna be around two gigabytes per second. So it just depends on the devices that you use, but there's very little overhead with this. So in terms of performance, you can expect the performance will be roughly in line with whatever devices you use to make up the the tiered storage solution, which is what the enterprise has enjoyed for forever. They're like, well, okay, we'll just, you know, you shouldn't have to figure that out. The computer should just do it for you. You shouldn't have 12 drive letters. The computer should just figure all of that out. Now it is true if you lose one of the drives in this group, you're gonna lose your information. But if you tell the software, hey, I wanna remove this drive, you totally can, and that's fine. So I really wanted, I wanted to create this video to explain the difference between cache and, uh, you know, tiered storage but also to give kudos to AMD for trying to do this. I mean, a lot of this, you know, cache hard drive thing has a bad rep and people are just gonna look at this and be like, well, it's like every other cache technology out there. And it's really not. This is really the first time that this kind of technology has been available in the consumer space in sort of a bundled scenario like this. I mean, you can use Fuse Drive. Fuse Drive is the software from InMotion. You can go buy that right now and it'll work on, on pretty much any platform, uh, including Linux. You can buy Fuse Drive for Linux and that's fine. There are open source of ways to do this on Linux too. So that might be a fun video for the Linux channel, but you don't have to buy anything with this. It's just sort of bundled and you get it for Threadripper. Like as of today, if you've got a Threadripper system that you bought last year and you want to try this out, you totally can. You don't have to reformat. You don't have to, you know, fight with your system. You don't have to redo anything. If you've got, you know, an SSD or even an NVMe and you want to add Optane, you can totally do that. It'll totally let you add a boot volume. The only limitation of the version from AMD is the 256 gig limit and that you can't have multiple uh, tiered storage drives. So you couldn't, for example, have an SSD accelerated mechanical hard drive plus an Optane accelerated SSD. So you, you couldn't have two volumes unless you get the license. But, uh, you know, those are really the only downsides that I can come up with. I think that if you get a 400 series motherboard and you've got, you know, you got the, the super cheap 32 gig Optane, you wanna try it. Or if you know somebody that has an 800p Optane that you could borrow to try this out, just to, just to experience it for yourself, you should totally do that because I think you might be disturbed. And I do have to giggle a little bit that AMD nailed the experience here with Optane to like have something that's not convincing, you know, not, it's, it's a good experience. And they did it better than the people that came up with Optane. I mean, there's, that's gotta be worth something, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of funny. Well, if, if you wanna, you know, change my mind on this or debate with me or whatever, I'm gonna be hanging out in the forums at Level 1 Techs. If you like this video, you should, you know, do the, YouTube stuff and subscribe and hit the bell and all that kind of stuff because the algorithm. So thank you. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out. I'll see you in the forums.